Our first example is a hydration reaction. A hydration reaction adds water across a double bond, and the OH is going to add to the more substituted carbon. Now, in this case, we have two secondary carbons here, but we have to watch out for rearrangement with a hydration because it does go through that ionic mechanism. So you need to watch for that methyl rearrangement, and that methyl is going to migrate in order to create that tertiary carbocation on this carbon. And when it does that, it puts an OH at that tertiary carbon. And so this is our new is our product. And we would name this product 1-methyl-1-cyclopentanol. <clears throat> now, this is not a stereocenter, and it is not a stereocenter because it does not have four different groups. See, if I draw my line here, we have these two ethyl groups on either side, so it has symmetry. So that is not a stereocenter. This next example is a halogenation reaction. And in a halogenation reaction, it adds anti only across that double bond. There is no rearrangement. So when we draw the product of this reaction, because it is a cyclo compound, it is in a circle, as it were, we need to add one of our chlorines to the top of the ring and one of them to the bottom. And you would name this by calling it trans 1,2-dichlorocyclohexane. Now, you could go through and name these stereocenters R or S if you would like. However, trans is the easiest way to go about it when you have a cyclic compound. Now, down here, this is a cycloheptane. This has seven, or heptene, it has seven carbons around the ring. NBS is a reagent that delivers bromine. This is called n bromosuccinamide and it's a low-dose bromine. It gives you an electrophilic bromine so that the uh, OH from the water could be nucleophilic. Now, this is a uh, hydrohedron formation, so if I can scratch out kind of a seven-membered ring, I hope that's seven members on my ring, and this is anti-only, so if the bromine is on top of the ring, that means the OH is below. Similarly, if the OH is on top, the bromine is below. So just like above, we would name this trans, but this time we only have the two bromo, <clears throat> one cyclo. Heptanol. Now you don't actually need the one here as because we are uh, declaring this as a heptanol. The OL tells us it is an alcohol. It will automatically have the num numerical preference. Our next example is a hydroboration oxidation. This adds in an anti fashion and it is a Markovnikov addition. So, excuse me, it's an anti Markovnikov addition. So let's draw our skeleton here and analyze. Here we have a tertiary carbon, and here is a secondary carbon. Now we are not going to have any uh, rearrangement here, but what happens is that the OH is going to add to the less substituted carbon. So I'm going to put my OH on this carbon. That means my bromine is going to add to this carbon. Now we can't call this trans because we don't have anything for it to be trans to, but we did just create two new stereocenters. So we need to name those stereocenters when we name our, our products. Now we can come this way, and although it is an anti-arrangement, uh, oh, let's go dash on this one. Although it's an anti-arrangement, it could be in either configuration. So if we look at this with the OH is going to have our first, if I'm, if I'm looking at uh, this compound on the left, 
our OH is going to have the first priority on this bottom stereo center. This is the one I'm looking at. So if this is one, then the rest of the molecule is two, and here is three, H is to the rear, then this is an R formation. So this is going to be an S over here. Now this one, this, uh, this other stereo center, we have four different groups, but we do not have a hydrogen. So you do need to use those CIP priority rules. Now bromine is going to be number one, and then we have to look for number two. So if I move down here, I have a CH, I have a CH2. That means this group is going to be number two. Let's see if I can... This group is going to be number two. And then this group is going to be number three because I have a CH2 and then a C, and I have a CH3 here. Now here, my four is coming out towards me. So you either make your asymmetric center, or if you can imagine it, if you can turn yourself around, and that's going to be a counterclockwise rotation. So this is an S, that means this is an R. So now let's name that parent chain. Let's see if I can change my color to make it a little bit easier to see. If I name that parent chain, I'm going to start with this carbon here. So whoop, I lost a carbon. Then I'm going to start with this carbon. So I have one, two, three, four, five, and six. That makes this hexanol. Now my OL is on carbon two, or my OH is on carbon two that creates that OL ending. So this is a two hexanol. And then I have two substituents. I have a methyl and a, bro a bromo. They're both on carbon three. So this, is, this will be a three bromo, three methyl, two hexanol, but then I have my stereochemistry. So it would be two R, 3S, 3-bromo, three 3-methyl, three 2-hexanol. And then similarly, we would have the enantiomer. So it would be 2S, 3R, 3-bromo, three 3-methyl, three 2-hexanol. Now for the next example, this is also a hydroboration oxidation reaction. So the OH is going to go to the less substituted carbon of my alkene. So basically, I'm going to put my OH here. And then my bromine is going to go here, and it is an anti-arrangement like this. Now, this does not make a new stereocenter, and it doesn't make a new stereocenter because I have two methyl groups here. Those methyl groups are the same, therefore that is not a new stereocenter. But this one is. So when I draw this product, I have... I have an enantiomer pair, and it is an alcohol, but how do we name it? Well, this one's a little bit goofy, and it's a little bit goofy because we're actually going to treat this uh, cyclohexyl group as an R group, as an alkyl group, and we will name it as a cyclohexyl group. So we will name our longest carbon chain that includes the um, functional group. So in this case, we have propanol. And that OH is on the first carbon, so it's a one propanol. Now we name our substituents. We have two bromo, two methyl, and one cyclohexyl. So this would be one cyclohexyl, two bromo, two methyl, one propanol. But we did create a new stereocenter, and that stereocenter is right here. CIP priority is that the OH gets the one, the cyclohexyl group will be two, and then the rest of the molecule will be three. So we will uh, rotate counterclockwise. So this is the S configuration. You can also form the other enantiomer, so you can also form the R. So when you uh, write this on your test, you write either both enantiomers, and then you can put in parentheses both the S and R at carbon one, of one cyclohexyl, two bromo, two methyl, one propanol, or write, write it out like this. So you would have the S in parentheses, one cyclohexyl, two bromo, two methyl, one propanol, and then also write out R, one cyclohexyl, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, so there are a couple of different ways to go about this.
Now the next example is adds HBr across this uh, double bond, and that is the hydrohalogenation. Hydrohalogenation has both syn and anti arrangement, and it is a Markovnikov addition. So that bromine, in this case, is going to add to the carbon the most substituted carbon, and in this case that's going to be this one right here. And because we are not making a new Stereo center, we don't have stereochemistry to declare, but let's name this. So this is a cyclohexane, and we have two substituents. We have a 1-bromo, and we have a 1-methyl. So this is 1-bromo, one 1-methyl one cyclohexane. This is not a stereo center because these two groups are identical. The next example we have, we have the addition of water in an acidic medium. This is called a hydration reaction. And this, is, this adds both syn and anti. There can be rearrangement. And it is a Markovnikov addition. Because it's a Markovnikov addition, that means the OH is going to go to the more substituted carbon. That puts it right here. And that makes this 1-methyl, one 1-methyl cyclohexanol. Again, you don't have to put the one in front of the cyclohexanol because by default it will be on carbon one. There is no stereochemistry to declare because this is not a stereocenter, just like the previous example. We have both of these sides are the same. For the next example, we have the addition of chlorine across this double bond. So this is a halogenation reaction. It does add both... Uh, Oh, no, I'm sorry. It adds anti-only, and there is no rearrangement. And that's okay. But because it's anti-only and we have a ring here, you do have to show that trans nature. So this is trans 1,2-dichlorocyclohexane. The next example is another hydroboration oxidation reaction. The hydroboration oxidation reactions are an anti-Markovnikov addition. That means what's classically the nucleophile, which would be the OH here, uh, would go to the less substituted carbon. So this is a great way to make primary alcohols. And this is 1-propanol. The next example, adding HBr across that double bond. So when we add the HBr, that's called a hydrohalogenation. And the bromine, this is a Markovnikov addition, so the bromine is going to go to the more substituted carbon, which would be here. But you do have to watch for some rearrangement. So, so although we have a tertiary, a potentially tertiary uh, carbocation there and a potentially secondary carbocation there, if I make the carbocation at the secondary and then take my methyl and put it here, what I, all I've done is I've really just turned the molecule around 180 degrees. So this is my only product. This is not a new stereocenter, so we do not have stereochemistry in, to declare. So when we go to name this, we would name this 2-bromo-2-methyl-butane. Now the longest carbon chain is four carbons long. I'm going to start here. One, two, three, four. So that's how you would name that product. The next example, we have another hydroboration oxidation. And remember, this is an anti-Markovnikov addition. So what's classically the nucleophile, which would be the OH, is going to go to the less substituted carbon. Now that is this one here. Uh, so, and it adds anti-only. So because it adds anti-only, the, uh, the other thing that's adding in a hydroboration oxidation is a hydrogen. And we are adding anti, so I'm going to put the OH above the ring, and I'm going to put the H below the ring. Now, I could also add the other way with the H coming out. That pushes the methyl group back, and I can put the OH to the rear. Now, when I do that, what I'm doing is I'm creating enantiomers. And these enantiomers, you can't call this cis and trans now. These are going to be, you're going to need to, to declare these R and S. So this is carbon one. Here's two, three, four, and five. Similarly, we would number this way. So I've created these two enantiomers, and they are 1s, 2r, 
2-methyl cyclopentanol, and I have 1R2S, 2-methyl cyclopentanol. Now for this hydroboration oxidation, I didn't give you a starting, I didn't give you the structure of the starting material. I expected you to draw it. So Z3-hexene. Z means zwitter or same. So we're looking for something on the same side. So if I just go and draw this out, one, two, three, four, five, six, three hexene, one, two, three, and looks like this, this is not Z hexene. This is E hexene. E is when they're on opposite sides, you see kind of in this transformation. So the Z, the zwitter, makes it like this. One, two, three, four, five, and six. So we look like this. This is Z3-hexene. Now the hydroboration oxidation is uh, anti-only, and it's anti-Markovnikov. That means the OH is going to add to the least substituted carbon. In this case, they're both going to be secondary carbons. So I'm looking here or here for my OH to be added. So when I do this, I can put my OH here to the top, and my H goes here, or I can put my OH to the rear, and my H on top. So now we need to identify this for our uh, for our stereochemistry. Now one of these is going to be R and one of these is going to be S. This is not a new stereocenter because it has two hydrogens to it, but this one is. So we would name the enantiomers here. This would be R three hexanol and S3-hexanol. So those are the products of this reaction. Our next example, we have a cyclopentene with a methyl group attached, and we're going to do a halogenation reaction across it. Remember, halogenation is anti-only. There is no rearrangement. So we're going to go anti-only, Two bromines are coming in, so I'm going to put this bromine on the top. That puts this bromine below. That brings the, the methyl group out. And the other enantiomer, because we have two different ways that we can do this, bromine to the rear. This bromine is on top, which puts this methyl group to the rear. So we have, let's see, when we have this over, we have an S here and an S here. That means this enantiomer is R on both. So we have 1S, 2S, 1, 2, dibromo, 2, methyl, cyclopentane, and then we also have the 1R2R, 1,2-dibromo-2-methylcyclopentane. For this example, another uh, halogenation reaction. Again, halogenation is anti-only. There is no rearrangement. You are adding diatomic chlorine across that double bond. So I'm just going to draw out the skeleton. I put one chlorine on top. I put one chlorine below. We also have the other enantiomer, where this chlorine is going to be behind, and this chlorine comes out in front. So what we're making here, let's see, this would be S and this would be R. So this is S and this is R. When we name this, we name it from the left. One, two, three, four, five. So this would be 2S, oh goodness. 2S, 3R, 2,3-dichloropentane, or it would be 2R, 3S. Both of those are products of this reaction. Now for the next one, we have, again, diatomic chlorine going across, but this time we're adding water. So because we have water here, this is actually a halohydrin reaction. It's still anti-only and there is no rearrangement, but the OH is going to go to the more substituted carbon. This is a Markovnikov addition. So 
The OH is going to be defined as going inside here. That means the chlorine comes here. And we can form both enantiomers, so the OH can come from behind as well. And that is, oh, I'm wrong. That is not a stereocenter, so there is no enantiomer to create. So that is just going to be named one. This is tricky because there is a, a, a carbon here. This is called 1-chloromethylcyclohexanol. Now for the next example here, we have HCl being added across that double bond. That's a hydrohalogenation. It adds both syn and anti. There is rearrangement possible. And it is a Markovnikov addition. Because it's a Markovnikov addition, that chlorine is going to add to the most substituted carbon. So here, we are not forming a new stereocenter. So that makes it easy. And we would call this 1-chloro-1-methyl cyclohexane. Down here we have H3O plus. Now remember from Chem 2 that this is an acidic medium. This is acid in water. So this is a hydration reaction. Hydration reaction adds an H and an OH, so water, across that double bond. It is a Markovnikov addition. That means the OH is going to go to the more substituted carbon, and you do have to watch out for rearrangement. Now, because this is our skeleton here, and we're looking at, let's see, these two carbons, this is my, oh, I'm wrong, this is my skeleton, and this tertiary carbon is the one that is going to form the cation, and therefore, that's where the OH goes. We are not making a new stereocenter here, and we're, this is not a stereocenter because this has three methyl groups, not four different groups. So you could call this, let's see, one, two, three, four. This could be tert-butanol, or this could be 2-methyl-2-propanol. Either one is okay. For this next example here, we have a hydrohalogenation reaction where we're going to add H and Br. Now this is Markovnikov, so the Br is going to go to the more substituted carbon. The more substituted carbon is on the ring, so the bromine goes here. That is not a new stereocenter, and that is not a new stereocenter because we do have this line of symmetry here. So this is 1-bromo-1-methyl-cyclopentane. Now this reaction here, this isn't one that I'm going to expect you to name the product of. This is kind of tricky. And the product is this uh, double, this bicyclic ring structure here. Now you do still have this alkene and that's where we're acting. This again, the H3O plus, this is the hydronium ion and what that means, again from, uh, you're expected to remember this from general chemistry, is that you have water and acid. So we form that hydronium ion. So this is a hydration reaction. It adds both syn and anti. There is possi the possibility of rearrangement, and it is a Markovnikov addition. Because it's a Markovnikov addition, you expect that OH to go to the more substituted carbon. So that OH is going to come in here. And because it can be syn and anti, it is possible to make both of the uh, both of the stereo stereocenters. But again, this is going to be a real tricky one to name. I'm not even going to name it for you because I don't want to confuse you even further. But that is the product of this reaction. Now down here, we have, look, we're using the same reactant, but instead of doing the hydration reaction, we are doing a halogenation reaction. Now the halogenation reactions, I think, are the easiest because across that double bond, regardless of that double bond, where that double bond is, you add your halogen. 
one on either side. Now this is anti only and there is no rearrangement and it doesn't matter that it's anti only in this case because we are not making stereo centers. So this is called one, two, di, bromo, two, methyl, propane. 